Welcome back as we enter the home stretch. The last 90 minutes or so of the 2022 Northern Waves. Marius and I were just reminiscing about the first Northern Waves when it was about 40 degrees Celsius outside. And this beautiful building was not so beautiful when it was that hot outside. Uh, but it's a wonderful place to have a, a great conversations like the ones we've been having here today. So I'm really looking forward to this, which has become an annual tradition, uh, a leadership debate amongst uh, well, leaders in the industry about some of the most pressing, pressing issues and challenges and opportunities uh, that face uh, the world of OTT, particularly here in the Nordics. Uh, I'm going to take the easy way out as the moderator and ask all of my panelists to introduce themselves, uh, starting with Brigitta. So hello, everyone. I'm Brigitta from Elisa in Estonia. And uh, if you think that uh, everyone else here, I think you consider yourself Scandinavians, right? So us in Estonia, we also secretly say that we are Scandinavians, almost Nordics. Mm -hmm. And then everyone from actual Scandinavian Nordics, then you're like, oh, no. <laughs> so today I'm uh, your Eastern European uh, Baltic friend, uh, almost Nordic uh, and Scandinavian, sitting here and telling you how Estonia is doing in TV. Niklas. Yes, hello everyone. My name is Niklas and uh, I have the most awesome title, as you say. I mean, director of entertainment, who don't want to have that title, <laughs> right? Uh, um, yeah, they actually make fun of me every single time in the office that the director of entertainment is coming. So, uh, that's, uh, that's really good. Fun to be a part of Tele2. Uh, I've uh, been in the industry for uh, nine years. Uh, it's uh, fun to see Mikko uh, talking about uh, Comhem and TiVo. Uh, I've been uh, part of that journey, also moving over to the Android TV space and now uh, kind of transforming ourselves into the, the OTT industry, uh, which is fantastic. And welcome back, Camilla, to the stage. Thank you. Uh, I think I have to change my title. <laughs> uh, I am CMO for TV and broadband in Telenor Norway. We have uh, 550,000 TV subscribers and 750,000 broadband subscribers in the Norwegian market. Terrific. And Marius, you've been at every one of these events and on this panel every time. Yeah, I suppose I'm a veteran by now. You are. <laughs> yeah, no, sure. Um, uh, yeah, I'm also quite envious of your title, by the way. Uh, so, well, might have to do some changes there. But uh, so far, I'm stuck with being the head of uh, TV tech for, for Telia, uh, here in Norway. Um, been in the business for much too long. So, uh, prior, well, I think for the first time, I was uh, representing GET. So, mm -hmm. it's the acquisition story from that, I suppose. That's right. Very good. Well, uh, let's dive right in. We're going to start out with some big picture questions and then dive into the details. Um, and uh, Camilla, I'd like to start with the first question to you. Uh, as you look at the industry right now, the OTT industry, the broadcast industry, in the Nordics, what's the biggest challenge that you think is facing the industry right now? Yeah, as I talked about earlier in my presentation, it's, 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 we have so much great content available, but we tend to lose uh, the customers on the way. They do not find the content that they are searching for. Uh, so we need great metadata so it's easy to search and find great content. We have to make it more user-friendly. We shouldn't have many different logons and passwords. And so we have to make it easy for the customer and they also expect it to be flexible for, for them so that they can choose what content they want to have and not. Uh, I think we have, a, we have, we have a changed a lot from linear to to a lot of streaming services and a lot of digital offerings. And we, we are on our way uh, as an industry and we collaborate, but we, we, we have to think mu do much more to make sure that the customers are satisfied. We cannot focus on, on our own. We have to focus on a win-win situation, a common goal here. All right, who wants to follow that? 
No, but I, I mean, uh, I absolutely agree, and I know that you hate when we agree up here, but uh, in that sense, I mean, I totally agree that, I mean, it is part of the CX, and we need to be even better. So the obvious answer is that the biggest problem is aggregation and uh, kind of customer fatigue in finding the right content. Uh, but I also, I mean, one of the biggest challenges that I see is also ourselves in this. Uh, and all of the things, the complicated things that we build and the rights that we kind of uh, give out, both when it comes to operators versus uh, um, the uh, content owners and the content owners to the operators. I mean, we heard Mikko talking about the kind of difference between if you're a disk customer, you get this thing on this device, but you can't get... I mean, honestly, we need to kind of remind ourselves that maybe we understand here in this room but that no, doesn't necessarily translate into that the average customer understand what we're doing. And that's a big problem, as I see it. And that contributes to what John Espen was talking about earlier today, which is if someone can go online and look up a pay TV service or what they think is a pay TV service, if it looks legitimate, if it has 24-7 customer support, they might not care that it's a pirate service. Um, so, uh, excellent point. Brigitte, what do you think the biggest challenge is right now in the industry? I do agree with the challenges you have mentioned already, but uh, what I also see is that uh, basically everyone in this room, our services are looking more and more similar. So uh, that uh, we are all going in the similar direction and we are all trying to find ways to make content discovery the best uh, version possible. But uh, I think the thing where we can differentiate is content, right? But the challenge is that we are more and more similar. And also, uh, I think with, if we are talking about content, then content acquisition prices have risen quite a lot. And if someone is planning to ask how much, you know, I can't answer. But uh, we can't make this also to the customer now saying that your price uh, will go, I don't know, 50% higher or 20 or 30% higher because everything is rising right now. Yeah, uh, I, I agree with all one panelists, which is boring, of course, but uh, I, I think we, we are all aggregators and aggregation is not a problem, but fragmentation is the problem. So, and, and, and you see that, I, I see that as a, somewhat of a, a, a technology trend. If you rewind our community uh, back 10 years, that, that technology wasn't available for everyone, but, but now the technology to make a streaming service uh, is, is so common and so widespread and so available that anyone that owns uh, even a, a modest uh, content selection can create their own service, uh, which for us is much harder to, uh, to aggregate than it was uh, you know, with linear channels and also with VOD, VOD packages. And them all being apps uh, also gives the pressure of have them all having, um, what should you say, uh, sufficient depth in their own archives to, to be standalone, which again leads the prospect of uh, creating content that we as an industry don't really need, uh, overproduction, which uh, adds to the aggregate cost of the industry, which in the end ends up with that. Um, us not having pricing power to, uh, to build our customers for these services uh, and mar margin compression for the entire value chain, uh, which isn't so good. So what I'm hearing is that, uh, as I said kind of flippantly in our interview earlier, Marius, and this is me speaking, not you, there's too many damn streaming services. The customers are getting confused because the content is too hard to find and too hard to keep track of what service, what's on, and where it's available. And it might be available here, but not over there. To be honest, this is, even, even though the, the number of streaming services has exploded in the last three years, these are challenges that I've been hearing on this very stage talked about for a number of years now. What is getting in the way of the industry, and by that I mean the people on this stage, helping to solve these challenges? Camilla. And, and uh, we are living in a gold age when it comes to content. And that's great. It's so much uh, good content uh, available. And I believe that we are moving 
and it's not so that nothing has happened because we are uh, we are getting more good metadata we are getting more streaming services in the aggregator platform so we are definitely moving in the, the right direction but we have to do more but also I think that uh, if we talk about the different uh, streaming services then if we talk about the big players I don't know how it is for all of you but uh, for smaller players, like uh, smaller countries, it's sometimes really difficult to even get behind the table of the big guys and to get their apps inside their service. So it's not only about what you want to have and what content you want to have for your service, but also getting them to agree with you yep. is uh, sometimes a big challenge. And uh, I think it's a question being uh, asked around uh, the closed doors quite a lot is that how did you get Netflix? How did you get them? Mm. Or some other services, for example, Netflix. Yep. <laughs> but I mean, in, in my view, I, I absolutely agree with you. I mean, I've been in the industry not uh, as long, only nine years, but I mean, uh, during that time we have talked about aggregation, we want to kind of partner up with the Netflixes, the Disney's, with everyone. Um, but I mean, if I only look at pre-pandemic, it's as you say, I mean, it was impossible to even get them to the table. Everyone was kind of making their D2C ambition. Uh, Viaplay did it, Seymour did it in the Swedish market, which kind of trashes the, the uh, linear channels of TV4 uh, in that sense for us and the partnerships. Uh, but then the pandemic hit, and we also start to see the kind of uh, uh, the streaming services maturing a bit uh, in terms of uh, penetration, and then suddenly kind of the table turns a bit because then they are looking at kind of, okay, so how do we make sure to stay relevant? How can we decrease churn? How can we kind of uh, combine ourselves with some more stable products? And I mean, there you have the operators like Telia, like Telenor and like Tele2 that has the kind of infrastructure and the connectivity that reduces the churn. And that's our kind of playing field in that sense. And that's a, the kind of new next wave, an interesting part uh, where we're going into, uh, which I really, really look forward to. Yeah, uh, I, I tend to agree. It's, uh, I, I think we are kind of past the peak, if you will. Uh, I think that we will see a lot more consolidation in um, pure streaming services going forward. And also, I hope, uh, some standardization as to how uh, aggregation and metadata uh, is done because uh, the kind of one-to-one -one models that we apply now doesn't really scale in a, in a good way. Well, Marius, what role does the operator in particular play in helping to solve these challenges and what can operators do in the near term well, we, we are the historic uh, aggregator of the business, right? So we, we used to aggregate uh, channels, then we aggregated what content, now we aggregate apps um, to various degrees. But, but, but it is our historic role, and I think that that, that will remain our historic role. Um, as for kind of facilitating that transfer, uh, I, I, I think we have a role in that as well. Uh, like crafting stra standards and uh, taking part in, well, with our content providers to, to, to make um, data exchange and stuff like that go more smoothly. Are you sensing there's more willingness now to look into establishing industry standards than there was maybe the first time we spoke four years ago? Yeah, sure, uh, it definitely is. Uh, for some partners, like you mentioned Netflix, perhaps not so much, uh, but uh, but at least for, for the local partners, uh, there's, there's definitely a much uh, much larger will to, to engage in that conversation by now. Uh, yeah, I would say that the, the global players are kind of turning around as well. Uh, we have some, some couple of big ones that have actually opened up and, and said that, hey, we are actually interested in, in doing some more uh, standard integration, uh, which is very, very interesting. That would never, ever have been possible uh, just uh, one, two years back. Uh, so, I mean, we're, we're getting somewhere, and that's, uh, that's interesting in terms of aggregation. But honestly, I, I mean, I don't think that 
none of us really understands who's going to be the winning uh, player in this. Uh, because, I mean, will it be on the hardware side where you aggregate, or it will be will it be on the software side, meaning all the apps, uh, or who will actually win this? That will be a, an interesting battle, uh, especially for us operators. Uh, what will we bet on? I think it's all about cooperation and collaboration, uh, find win-win solutions and, and focus on the customers. Netflix, uh, they had a tough start uh, of, of this year. Uh, they disappointed the market, uh, the share price fall significantly, uh, the, the volumes were going down and then, so it's another phase now, it's more mature and we need to, we, we are dependent on each other. Yeah, and uh, I think that uh, in the end, for all of us, the goal is that our customers would have the content they want to watch and they could find it uh, in a way that's convenient for them. So I can bring the example of uh, Grey's Anatomy, which wasn't available on any of the services that was available in Estonia. So it was only coming from the channels from time to time. So I had to be the pirate and watch the pirates, uh, pirate uh, as a service, right? Because I had no other place to watch it from. So what we can do is that we make sure that uh, we have all the relevant content, we have all the relevant apps integrated, and uh, we are the aggregators and co-working and trying to find ways to work together and not be the competitors. And also what I see is that um, if we uh, put more and more effort and also resources into original content, then this is the place where uh, you can provide your customers with something that is different and is keeping them with your service and make sure that they have something to watch in the evening. Before we move on to the next question that we had talked about ahead of time, I want to come back to standards. And without getting too deep into the technical weeds, exactly what kind of standards do you think the industry needs to agree on? Well, that's some. Basic metadata stats uh, for, for ingest would be very useful, uh, but I think uh, stuff like how to sync play positions, for instance, uh, is something that is, I think, destructive for our services because we can link out, but we can't really gain any deeper knowledge than, than whatever you would like to propose. Um, so that, that, that's very useful. Um, sharing of profiles, perhaps? Uh, Stuff like that. Anyone else have thoughts on particular technical challenges you'd like to see the industry come to standards agreements on? Also, maybe metadata in different languages would be a nice thing to have. Log on. My next question is actually about localization and about the challenges specific to the local markets within the Nordics, Scandinavia, the Baltics, uh, expanding it a little bit, but you know, this is Northern Waves, it's about Nordic media companies, but obviously Norway is not the same as Denmark or Sweden or Estonia. Yeah. And so, uh, can we start with you, Brigitte, talking about the specific challenges that you see in the Estonian market? I think uh, I can bring an example here is that uh, we also have discussed it uh, in one other panel and uh, there I had a um, competitor who is uh, in different Baltic markets and what we see is that uh, Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia are completely different and uh, what content they are waiting for and uh, what uh, flavor of content they want is completely different. I would expect the same thing is happening in the Nordics, is that uh, what uh, a Norwe uh, Norwegian likes, the Finnish might not like, uh, and it might be different in that direction, and also I think its languages are different. What we see in Estonia is that uh, Estonia has both Estonians and Russian speakers, and what happened uh, beginning of this year was the war, and thanks to the war we had to shut down a lot of uh, Russian channels. And after that, making sure that also the Russian customer or Russian-speaking customer would have content to watch and they wouldn't only go for the uh, unknown services uh, that are running around in the internet. It's a, it's a challenge, I think. Nicholas, what about Sweden? What are your particular challenges and opportunities? Uh, 
I would say that, I mean, challenge for challenge. I mean, uh, we have a, a quite good pay TV penetration. Uh, and with pay TV penetration, I mean the kind of old traditional way. Um, and my biggest challenge is that we need to kind of bring them into the future. We know that we have a, a streaming population um, that are very engaged in apps and what have you but they are also kind of heavy users on the linear TV and are paying a, a lot of money for linear channels. So my biggest challenge is to kind of bring those two worlds together um, and also to try to make sure that they continue to, to be relevant and pay for the, the right, uh, right things. Um. Right, Camilla? In Norway, we also have a really high uh, pay TV penetration, which is great. Um, uh, streaming, local streaming services are now available um, to the aggregators. The metadata, it varies. Uh, we, uh, we have TV2, where we have a, a very positive experience, while with other ones, we do not have the same. Uh, experience. Um, we are developing the right direction when it comes to logon, um, uh, and, uh, and we see that we depend on each other uh, on a local level uh, towards the international competition. So, um, yeah. Uh, all right. So I, I think I want to come in on Norway again, but uh, as Telia, we are present in all of the Nordic and, and Baltic markets, so so we have some some comparison, I suppose. Uh, I, uh, and we apply approximately the same products to to all the markets, but um, there are differences to languages, of course, content, uh, all of those things, and uh, there are also differences in legislation, uh, kind of what features uh, need to be enabled by law, uh, stuff like that. Uh, also differences, well, slight differences in consumption habits. Uh, Finland is uh, perhaps our most uh, linear-dominated market, uh, for instance. Uh, there's also a, a large application of uh, PVI use in Finland, much as is in, is in Norway, uh, not so much in Sweden. Uh, so there's, there's slight uh, behavioral cons differences between the markets that also have a, a feature impact, but, uh, but yeah. Okay. Uh, again, the theme of cooperation, collaboration, and partnership has come up throughout the day. It has come up on every one of these panels since 2018. But every time I visit the Nordics, I look at the newspaper, and there is a huge conflict. There's always a huge conflict going on about rights and availability. You know, right now, and again, we don't need to dig into the specifics of this one, but you know, uh, Altabox customers have been without TV2 channels for months. Uh, there's other similar situations going on now, which we maybe won't go into in specifics. Um, but, you know, so at the same time, everyone in the industry is, seems to be clamoring for collaboration and partnerships and cooperation. There is this tension and conflict. Again, without necessarily addressing any particulars, uh, what can be done to prevent those conflicts from occurring and continuing in the future? Um, and again, talk about the importance, come back to partner, partnerships and cooperation. Camilla. Yeah, um, I think it's a lot about, again, collaboration and finding the win-win solution. Of course, every, everyone is losing uh, when it's a conflict, like uh, mm -hmm. the customer in particular, but also both parties. So it's only losers and it's sad for the industry. So we have to start earlier to find win-win solution and spend more time, I believe. Mm. Well, well, Nicholas, I know you were eager to talk about the, the partnership between Tele2 and Viaplay. Correct. But or then uh, Telenor kind of uh, stole the show with their announcement that they are also doing this via play partnership. <laughs> so I uh, guess that they like to copy us, um, but that, that's okay. Um, no, I but I mean... Coming up, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Tele has some, some troubles at the moment in Sweden uh, agreeing with via play, but, and that's fantastic. We just welcome uh, uh, those customers over. So thank you for that. Uh, appreciate welcome. it. Um, <laughs> No, but I, I, I do agree that, I mean, uh, we, of course, have, have difficult discussions with uh, most of, of the partners. Um, uh, and I know, 
I was um, in the room where we decided to uh, uh, close down both uh, Channel 5 uh, back in the days, and also uh, we had a bit of an issue with TV4 just a, a couple of years back. Uh, and I mean, it is very difficult, and it's not that uh, anyone want to, to close it down, but you kind of end up in that position to kind of force each other uh, to move. Um, and that's very, very unfortunate, as you say. I mean, we lose the credibility in the industry because, I mean, the, the consumers, they don't really understand what the hell is going on nope. and why do we do this. Uh, they just think that everything should just continue, which it should. I absolutely agree on that. Um, but, I mean, just uh, taking our deep partnership and strategic partnership with Viaplay, I mean, what we basically did there was to kind of find the win-win situation into that. And that's very easy to sit here and say that. But we truly kind of opened up and said, okay, we want to be partners and we want to win together. How do we make sure that when we win, you win, and when you win, we win? And that's the first time that we've had the, those kind of open um, questions solved in a negotiation in, in that sense. And that was very, very interesting, and it's been a, a success since this. What a novel approach to actually, if you'll pardon my French, not bullshit around and cut to the chase and say, look, either everybody loses or perhaps we both can win here if we actually work at it. Yes. But, but I do think that, I mean, it's part of the circumstances at the moment. I mean, with the, with the Netflixes and Disney Pluses and Amazon and what have you, uh, it's much easier to, to do that local deal with the Viaplay that are very local focused, uh, in a sense. And now when uh, Seymour and Telia has kind of partnered uh, up, there are not that many local players left. Um, but I mean, that's the kind of situation we're in at the moment. And that kind of, uh, yeah was very good for our strategy going forward, at least. Uh, you have some very expensive sport rights, and uh, you have to agree on the payments, and that can, of course, tend to be a challenge, even though we're trying to find the win-win situations. Right, and, and those are the kinds of uh, disputes that are happening all the time everywhere. They're not, it's not exclusively a Nordic problem, certainly in the United States, you know, there's issues about your favorite sports team no longer being available on the local channel to you, the local cable channel, much less a streaming service because of the price of those rights and unwillingness to budge on either side. Uh, before we move on from this question, um, Brigitte or Marius, anything you wanted to add? No, I, I think it's uh, ultimately about that, right? The financial squeeze between uh, higher input costs and um, uh, increasingly low uh, ability for us to pass those costs on to, to the consumer. I also agree that uh, there, in the end, who is losing, everyone are losing in this situation if uh, either the users are lo using, losing channels or whatever is the case. But what we have also seen is that uh, if you uh, create uh, your own content together with, uh, for example, a broadcaster or someone, then it's a great way to work together for a common goal. And I hope that we all see in the markets more and more working together instead of having these, uh, I don't know exactly the details, but fights with uh, someone not having channels, someone not having some services. So I hope for a brighter future. At this moment, I am going to take this mic into the audience for audience questions because we're short of microphones. So uh, while I do that, if anyone has any questions, please raise your hand and I will bring the mic to you. Get some different answers next year as well. Uh, please, a round of applause for our panelists.